Well, welcome, welcome back, guys. This is now the multiple choice section, uh, part two, questions 11 to 20. Enzymes can act as biological catalysts because they, well, catalysts obviously, um, in most cases, speed up reactions, and they do that because they offer an alternative route with lower energy. So basically, um, even though A is correct, they can be denatured. They're sensitive to pH temperature changes. Um, they do not affect the equilibrium constant. But in this case here, they act as catalysts because they lower the activation energy. Green chemistry principles include the design of chemical synthesis process that. I hope you can realize that C and D are immediately out because green chemistry clearly is going to try and use renewable resources. Um, now, the first one says minimize unwanted products, and the second one, minimize unwanted reactants. Well, clearly, it's got to be A, all right? We want to produce as much of our desired product as possible, and we don't want any waste. So, A is your correct answer. Question 13. Now, as you know, the data book will give you infrared data. Let me just show you in the data book where you will find it. All right, so there you can see the data that you're given for the infrared. Uh, this particular one here is asking the functional group present in the infrared spectrum. Okay, now then ignore anything down here, guys. This is the fingerprint region. You're not interested in that at all. Even though they give you values down there, they're an absolute waste of time, okay? We're only interested in basically this section, all right, from, say, the CO to the NH, okay? Ignore anything. The halogen bonds to carbon are never going to be tested. And if they were, you couldn't identify them. So we have clearly a very distinct peak here, which is around about 1700, I would say. That's a narrow peak. That will tell you there's a carbonyl group present. Let me show you. Okay, so there it is, 1700, 1750, the carbonyl group, C double bond O, aldehyde, or carboxylic acid, or ester, or ketone. So it's one of those four. We also have a very, very broad peak at around 3000. Now, when you see a broad peak at 3000 or more, so you might see one up here as well, there's an OH present. It's, it's blatantly guaranteed to be OH. Hydrogen bonding causes a lot of different frequencies to be uh, absorbed, so you see a very broad peak in the infrared spectrum. Okay, now then, OHs could be present in alcohols, obviously, and they can be present in carboxylic acids. Now, in terms of how do you know which is which, look at the position. If it's a 3,000, it's a carboxylic acid. If it's up here somewhere, more like 3003, it's an alcohol. So this is going to be a carboxylic acid. Again, data book. There's the OH of a carboxylic acid. You can see the 3000. There's the OH of an alcohol. You can see it's further to the left. Okay. So our functional group is clearly a carboxylic acid, which is D. Question 14, we're given some Ka values of some acids. Use the data to determine the strengths of the acids from strongest to weakest. Okay, now a Ka value is a measure of the dissociation of a particular acid. And since Ka measures the product concentrations over the reactant concentration, then the bigger the Ka value, the more the dissociation, and therefore the stronger the acid. So we are going to put these in order from the biggest Ka to the smallest Ka. Well, the biggest Ka is clearly the 10 to the minus 3, chloroethanoic. Then we have hydrofluoric, 7.2 versus 4. They both have the same power of 10. And finally, ethanoic. And that gives us B as our choice. Which organic compound has the highest boiling point? Now, when you're looking at boiling point, you're looking at intermolecular forces. And they can be dispersion forces, which are always present. They can be dipole-dipole, which are present when there are permanent dipoles. 
and they can be hydrogen bonds when there's an OH or an NH bond. I wouldn't worry too much about FH because you're not going to see those in organic compounds. Okay, now then. In these here, we have A is an alkane. That'll be dispersion forces. B is an aldehyde. That'll be dipole-dipole. C is another alkane. Dispersion again. And D is an alcohol. Now, again, you have to be careful that they're all similar size molecules because dispersion forces can be more... Uh, more stronger in very big molecules. I mean, polymers, for example, you know, are often dispersion forces between them if they're alkanes, and yet they can still be solids. Now, clearly, they're all similar size chains, so the alcohol is going to have the highest boiling point. Question 16 looks like a moles question. Calculate the percentage yield of magnesium methanoate. This is magnesium methanoate when eight moles of ethanoic acid reacts with six moles of magnesium carbonate. Okay, now then, if you are taking eight moles of ethanoic acid, that will react with four moles of magnesium carbonate, two to one ratio. You have six moles of magnesium carbonate. Clearly, the six moles means there's too much magnesium carbonate. However, all of the ethanoic acid will be used. It is the limiting reagent here. It is the one that decides how much of the product you make. Eight moles of this will make four moles of that. That would be if it was 100% yield. It tells us the number of moles produces 3.5. So our percentage yield will be 3.5 over the expected yield, which is 4, times 100, which is 88%. Determine the concentration of hydrogen ions in an aqueous solution containing 1.2 times 10 to the minus 3 mole per litre hydroxide ions. In the data book, right at the very start, you are given the value of, you can see Kw is H plus times OH minus. And in the next table, you will see that its value is 10 to the minus 14. So to answer this question, all we've got to do is divide 10 to the minus 14 by 1.2 times 10 to the minus 3. And that's going to give us B, 8.3 times 10 to the minus 12. Identify the major product when 2-methylbutene reacts with water under acidic conditions. To answer this, we need to first of all appreciate that water will add on as hydrogen and OH. And when, when an unsymmetrical reactant like that reacts with an unsymmetrical alkene like that, you may want to draw that structure out to see for yourself. McConaughey's rule tells us that the hydrogen of the water will add to the carbon atom that already has more hydrogens. In that case, it is going to give you B as your answer because the carbon there and the carbon there are the ones that had the double bond in 2-methylbutene. Since this carbon would have a single hydrogen and that carbon would have none, then the hydrogen goes to this carbon and the OH goes to that one, okay? So the options would really B or C and B is the correct answer. To form ethanol biofuel in the fermentation of glucose, a catalyst is used because, well, first of all, obviously, it's got to be A or B. You're not going to use it if you're going to need more energy. You're going to need it. You're going to use it because you want to use less energy. And obviously, the rate of the reaction will increase. Otherwise, why bother using it at all? So A is your correct answer. And lastly, number 20, the ester linkage in aspartame, uh, aspartame is, uh, it's not that, it is that, it's not that, and it's not that. Okay, so this is a carboxylic acid. This is basically the carbon carbonyl group of an amide. This is your ester. To be honest, I think they should have circled just this bit because that bit can change. This is the function group of the ester. However, it is the only possible answer there that could be correct, okay? That there is not enough. You need both oxygens included for the ester.